to everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to see all, all of you uh, uh, to participate uh, to this important uh, moment uh, of, uh, to, of our uh, work so that uh, uh, take a lot of years, uh, the, 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 the two projects, the uh, Civic and Chip, uh, Grand, Grand Source it, uh, uh, Exchanger and Pumps, uh, uh, that are two European uh, uh, projects uh, that uh, are uh, running practically since six years, uh, one uh, following the second one. Uh, and uh, so the, the, the presentation of these two projects uh, are uh, linked to the, to the results uh, that uh, we obtain uh, with the chip uh, and also pub and uh, is running uh, with the Geofor Civic. Uh, and I think that uh, the results are very interesting to the people that are, are uh, um, uh, interested to this, uh, to this field of a geothermal application. So today uh, we have uh, um, six uh, speakers uh, that I present uh, and uh, each of uh, them uh, presented the results uh, that we obtain uh, and different uh, focus. Uh, so I just start uh, with myself uh, and uh, I present before myself and after before uh, uh, the, the speech of each of them, uh, I present uh, who are the speaker. And after I, get, I will give the floor to the speaker. You have to put your questions uh, in the uh, in the chat, uh, and uh, I collect all this chat, uh, and at the end uh, we uh, we try to answer to the, the uh, to the to your question. Uh, we have uh, some minutes uh, dedicated to that. So uh, I start this uh, this uh, section of. Uh, of the, the, the meeting, uh, of the workshop. Uh, I present, uh, first of all, myself. Uh, I am uh, the head of unit of Padova, of the Institute, uh, Institute of Atmospheric Sciences and, Clima and Climate of the uh, National Research Council. I have a physicist, I was, I'm a senior researcher. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm author of about uh, uh, 350 scientific papers uh, published in national and international journals. And I'm a uh, uh, scientific coordinator and scientific responsible. I was, uh, and I am, uh, of numerous uh, uh, research projects. 
In particular, uh, European projects, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I coordinate and I'm coordinating uh, six European projects, and these are the two last uh, that uh, I am coordinating. I'm finally in member of numerous uh, scientific commission, uh, and my role uh, in, the, in the project uh, is, uh, of course, a coordination, uh, but also my field of application that is a comfort aspect, uh, and in particular, the application of cultural heritage building uh, that are uh, one of the focus in particular of the GeoCC. So this is, this is my presentation uh, and uh, uh, now, I just very quickly try to present the two projects uh, that uh, you will hear the, the results in, in the next uh, minutes. The first project is a, a cheap and efficient application of reliable ground source exchanges and pumps. Uh, cheap, um, the, 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 the acronym is a little complicated, but you can read that yourself. Uh, this, is pro this project uh, is uh, composed by 70 partners uh, in all the Europe, like you can see in the picture. And uh, the uh, aim of the project uh, was, uh, because this uh, is the first one, one that is finished uh, by one year, and uh, uh, the aim is reduce the total cost uh, because the problem of the um, uh, uh, of the of this kind of renewable uh, is uh, uh, the cost uh, and the, the people stop them for the cost uh, so reduce the, the cost uh, is uh, one of the main aim of, uh, of the project increase the safety increase the awareness uh, because a lot of people does not know this uh, um, the, the, the geothermal, and uh, finally, to do this uh, uh, technical as aspect uh, that uh, you will hear in, uh, in the following, uh, that is uh, regards to the drilling machine, uh, the, uh, the direct exchange, heat pumps, uh, new heat pumps, uh, and, uh, and the um, tool to, um, to, to, to manage, to approach uh, this uh, uh, geothermal, the geothermal system. Uh, the uh, strategy is uh, finally um, regard the uh, geological aspect uh, that uh, you have uh, a long uh, uh, presentation. So I don't skip, I just give the, 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 the idea what uh, what we follow. Uh, the the heat exchanger, different uh, two types, uh, different exchange, uh, and also the machine that are built for the particular, um, this particular heat exchange. Software and modeling tool and, uh, other, and new heat pumps that uh, in particular was uh, devoted to, to the, temp the terminal out, uh, high temperature uh, terminals. That is very important uh, to, for the application of historical buildings uh, and also uh, try to use a refrigerant more ecological. We had uh, different uh, demonstration cases. Uh, just very quickly, you can see six real demo cases in different uh, Ireland, uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, Christ, uh, sorry, Greece, uh, um, uh, Slovenia, and uh, um, uh, Spain. Uh, after we have eight uh, uh, virtual demo cases, this means uh, that uh, there are uh, the um, application, virtual application of this, uh, of this uh, building. We have eight uh, building and two uh, historical districts. Uh, you can see by yourself uh, the distribution in Europe. And uh, uh, finally, the strategy of the project uh, is also to face the, 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 the uh, impact in the environmental in the, in the environment the market evaluation of course is very important and also we face standard and regulation so uh, you can see we have a different product uh, training and the manuals that you can find in the uh, in the web afterward after we have uh, Geoforcivica is uh, the structure is uh, very similar. 19 partners, a lot of them uh, comes from cheap. So uh, the um, the aim uh, is uh, overcome the barrier. Uh, the uh, the um, 
uh, all, always uh, to face the investment, the cost, the environmental friend, friendly heat, um, drilling, uh, and the, te the uh, terminals for uh, application of heat and cooling. We have a lot of uh, uh, heat pumps that uh, are uh, uh, innovated uh, or totally new um, uh, heat pumps that are. Um, are, uh, are in progress uh, the, the building because this is a project uh, that is in project uh, and also again uh, the awareness uh, uh, that is uh, mm, uh, very low. Uh, here we, the context is a little different, a little building, little garden, little. So the one of the focus is to understand how to apply the, our uh, innovation uh, with a more compact um, machine, more, uh, more easy installation. Uh, and this is a focus for the historical building is uh, that has a little garden, uh, historical center and so on. This is really very focused on historical building and the, and the very narrow space. And uh, again, uh, it pumps uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, it exchange. Uh, we have uh, uh, technical uh, uh, focus uh, to, to to improve uh, what uh, we are um, the innovation and what we built also in the in the in the chip in the first project uh, that is. Uh, uh, needed to be improved. And finally, uh, we have the aspect of uh, uh, geological uh, aspect uh, that uh, is, uh, is presented after, and uh, also the part uh, devoted to the uh, uh, tool that can, uh, can help us to, uh, to give uh, an idea of the feasibility uh, of, the, of the systems. And, uh, and the final also uh, also, um, um, also a app uh, an application to guide uh, toward energy saving action. There are two application, one dedicated to uh, the, uh, the aspect of uh, geological aspect and another to energy aspect. And the innovation will be presented very uh, uh, deep, deeply in in the following so heat exchange uh, and different heat ex exchanges and uh, also different heat pumps uh, that uh, uh, as I said for high temperature or um, hybrid or uh, different um, uh, for different application uh, again a field test again uh, um, pilot studies uh, that you can see in Spain um, uh, and, and uh, in Padova and also uh, real demonstration in Ferrara historical building uh, and uh, in Ireland in other historical building in La Valletta and in Battle in Belgium. And here uh, we will uh, uh, apply the different, uh, the different uh, innovations so that uh, we have a uh, power Disposition again, a virtual demonstration application to see what happens. Twelve virtual demonstration, and uh, uh, again uh, a particular attention to the uh, regulation standard and uh, and uh, environmental impact of our system. Uh, there is also an aspect linked to the share to the to the discrimination uh, because of the point of awareness uh, is very important, uh, but very few known uh, the, the, the the system in Europe. And uh, finally, we will have also to the intention to organize the European Center of Excellence. Uh, for shallow geothermal application in civil and historical building uh, that uh, uh, the group of university in particular are uh, organizing as this uh, will be a product, a final product of the project, of the, 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 the two projects. Okay, so geophysics is still in, in progress. So, but in any case, uh, during this day, um, this, uh, this workshop, uh, we will present uh, very quickly, uh, but there is uh, the uh, the result, but there is uh, the website uh, where you can uh, you can see in detail, uh, and you can have all the product and the manual and uh, the regulation and what you need uh, that are product and are available in the website in both the web side. So I thank you very much about this uh, very quick presentation. Sorry for the quickness. Uh, and now I'll uh, I give uh, the um, 
I, the next presentation, uh, we, uh, uh, I present the, 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 the next speaker and, uh, uh, and uh, I give the floor to, to him. I present to him. Where where is the timer on? Uh... You have. Uh, Okay. Uh, okay, I've seen it now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Julia, che ti. No, no. Okay. Che ti faccia segno. Ti faccia segno. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the virtual room three. Um, uh, look. I, sorry. Yes. Okay. I just uh, would like to present yourself. Okay, I was too quick, sorry. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to present Engineer uh, Procule uh, that uh, um, before this the, 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 the presentation, uh, he is an electromechanical engineer from the, the, from the University of uh, Brussels, uh, held uh, several management positions in engineering, manufacturing, and supply chain divisions at large multinational companies. Uh, as an engineer, the rebuild started uh, intensive process plants, uh, plants including a 45 megawatt large cogeneration and district uh, for this and also for district heating. Managed large project uh, and program uh, has 10 years uh, is uh, uh, the um, uh, the managing of the Society of Redders SRL focus, uh, focusing uh, on geothermal energy plants, uh, energy efficiency in building, monitoring system for microclimate and energy surveying. He is strongly involved uh, in the uh, innovation of geothermal system, uh, uh, systems and uh, is leading uh, in, uh, in the project, in both projects, uh, demonstration of efficiency of installation of shallow geothermal and uh, uh, eating a cooling system in a retrofitted installation. So, look, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, coordinator. Sorry for my intrusion first. <laughs> uh, no, no, sorry. Okay. Um, so, I will cover the, uh, the developments in the components of the shallow geothermal systems, which go to a depth of 100, 150 meters, uh, in contrast to the, to the, to the, the, the deep geothermal developments. <coughs> And uh, the coordinator already covered um, the the two projects in which these developments, in which these components were developed. So I will uh, quickly um, go to um, to the uh, just a moment that I uh, I do not the the uh, the PowerPoint doesn't react. Can okay, thank you. It took some time, sorry. The, so the two projects, uh, Cheap GSPs and geo for civic uh, have, uh, have similar, but also some slightly different, um, different objectives as was uh, explained by the coordinator. Uh, but I will focus on uh, in the, uh, the, the component side on, uh, on the cost reductions, which is the main purpose of, uh, of the, the Cheap GSPs project with the development of the components. And we are trying to improve the, the, the extraction rates or the heat exchange rates of the heat exchangers through design and material selections and uh, combine, the and combine that with the uh, installation methods, machine developments to gain on the installation time. Uh, the combination of both should uh, will lead to cost reductions, which uh, geothermal, shallow geothermal um, systems need uh, to uh, to be able to uh, to be selected by homeowners. 
to actually install, uh, use this interesting and very uh, highly potential uh, renewable energy source. Geoforcivic continues on that uh, in that field, but uh, here we are focusing, uh, we are continuing with one of the two drilling methods and, and heat exchangers, which are the coaxial uh, heat exchangers made out of steel. Uh, but we are focusing on uh, also on compact drilling machines, which are able to maneuver or, or do the drilling in built environment with its different uh, limitations in location and, uh, and uh, access and also noise and disturbance. Uh, whilst we will also be developing or we are developing uh, several solutions with heat pumps, which I will cover in the, in, uh, at the end of this presentation. The um, first, the uh, one of the first heat exchangers was the hel uh, helicoidal heat exchanger, which where the state of art is that you insert a basket of about half a meter wide, between one to four and a half meters deep, uh, with an uh, an auger method, which is a which is a, a method which makes a hole um, in the in the in the ground, and it's usually a simple machine attached to the cranes of a, of a, in a, in a construction site. Um, what we uh, and the, the the limit is of course that you can only apply that if the if the hole doesn't collapse. And uh, the, the capacity is limited. You have between two to 400 watts. Uh, so you would need a lot of baskets to, uh, to actually uh, supply energy to a house, which typically takes about, uh, let's say, a, a well-insulated house for 100 to 200 square meters takes six kilowatts, of which three quarters comes from the ground. So that's about uh, four or five kilowatts, which you need to supply. With a, a renovated house, you would need the double. So uh, we looked at uh, a development taking that heat basket idea, but reduce the diameter, develop the uh, components of the drilling machine to make larger drillings with the support of the borehole so that we could go deeper because the, the heat baskets have the, the, the nice uh, advantage that they, uh, they have a large heat exchanger surface and per meter of length, they, they have, a, they have a, a double of the usual energy exchange rate. So we, um, we developed that heat exchanger by uh, developing materials. We had a co that was done by a partner, Rehau, who developed a co-extruded uh, pipe with an aluminum foil so that, that uh, we could go uh, into uh, uh, smaller diameters without deforming the, the roundness of the tube. Okay, we uh, we had the drilling machine which you see on the picture here, which um, which was a hollow auger with an internal uh, an internal diameter, free diameter, so that we could insert the the heat basket, uh, and the, the 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 drilling had had to develop a high torque to be able to go down, and the we developed segments, and each time we go deeper and attach segments. We demonstrated that in uh, in uh, in four different sites and have proven that the heat exchange is uh, is effectively uh, higher than than its doubling um, uh, its doubling um, on on uh, in terms of meter length and because we are installing higher lengths we can achieve uh, close to, up to uh, 1.4 kilowatts per per heat exchange. Where can this be applied? It can sub, uh, principally be applied in, in uh, renovated houses with a low energy demand uh, in, in, uh, in areas where the authorities do not permit to, uh, to go deeper than, let's say, uh, 20, uh, 15, 20 meters to protect the, uh, the, uh, the aquifers under, under, uh, which, are, which are carrying water. Uh, this is the case in certain places, like, for instance, in Luxembourg, uh, so that that uh, this methodology could be very interesting uh, when you have when you are missing surface area and when you can uh, are limited with the with surface area for horizontal heat exchanges and we are where you are limited uh, in depth to go with the with the with the conventional technologies. Uh, another uh, development and it is is one of the mainstream developments which we continued also in GeoForCivic. Uh, and that is a, a piled, it's a heat exchanger out of steel. It's a very reactive heat exchanger because we are piling the heat exchanger directly into the ground using an internal shaft to, to, uh, to drill the hole whilst we are entraining the, uh, the external tube of the heat exchanger into the soil. 
uh, with the machine has a drilling head which is able to to vibrate and to rotate and through the internal shaft we insert water uh, this allows us to to uh, to have higher conductivities because of the tight contact of the metal which is a much better conductive conductor than than plastic and and not disturbed by grout into direct contact with the soil and um, and uh, we are having shorter insulation times because uh, we do not need to in in uh, in unstable uh, soils to to pour, to install a support casing which which would mean the double of the work first you do the shaft insertion then you insert the support casing uh, we could also, uh, we, uh, where possible, we will not grout so that we have the direct contact. Where authorities request, we can obviously grout because we can insert the grout through the internal shaft into the drilling bit. Uh, we also in increased the external diameter because this technology existed already in, in from 2006, seven onwards and was used by a pa our partner in Belgium for quite some time. Uh, with with the with the uh, with the heat exchangers of 50 millimeters and grouted into a pre-drilled hole, but this this methodology now is is very promising in such a way that we uh, we did in the demonstrations uh, measurements directly in confrontation with uh, conventional uh, heat exchangers, and you can see on the curve here uh, that the reactivity of the coaxial heat exchangers, the green one. And and the, the the and the the red one are much much higher at the initial at the beginning of the of the uh, cycle of the heat pump, um, and they are pulling much more energy. Uh, heat pumps uh, work on a, on a, on a, on a transitional cycle of 10, 20 minutes each time. So the, the the soil has the time to reload, rebalance, and retake again more energy in the next cycle. And we demonstrated that uh, that uh, that we could extract 10 to 20 percent more uh, with this type of heat exchangers than with the conventional ones. Which would, uh, including that we are we did, we grouted them at that time, so we we were not able to uh, to install heat exchangers without a grout in this project. We will in the Geo Civic project. So we expect that we could even get up to 30 percent more uh, exchange rate, which would mean 30 percent less meters to install. We, we, uh, the, the penetration rate is also quite high uh, because we are pulling the installation rate is high because we, we uh, the installation time is high, sorry, because we are not needing to do a casing uh, to support a borehole because the, uh, the, the external tube of the heat exchanger keeps that borehole open. So especially in, in, uh, in soils, uh, in, uh, for instance, in Northern Italy where the boreholes collapse, uh, this technology can lead to 30% cost reduction, and we filed a patent in in December 2008, a patent request which got a very favorable first uh, uh, first uh, evaluation. Um, the, uh, we took this method further in the Geofor Civic project by uh, working on the on the uh, on the drilling head and taking a a vibro rotating drilling head from Tissen. Which where where Tyson had uh, who took the charge to make it more compact, uh, less heavy, so that we can install it on uh, compact drilling machines, which is the case uh, in the Geofor Civic project where you see the drilling machine, where we developed the the um, where we developed uh, uh, shorter uh, shorter. Uh, let's say masts with here you see the drilling head, but the 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 drilling machine. Is um, is able to uh, uh, to have his uh, his uh, power pack detached so that we can go with the short uh, mast in, inside houses or in the in gardens. The drilling machine is lighter so that we can lift it over houses with the crane because normal drilling machines take 20, 25 tons. It's almost impossible to get to lift them, uh, but this one is six, seven tons, so can be lifted. Um, and we are using the same technique of the internal shaft uh, where we lose the drill bit and then insert a plastic tube to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to, make, to complete the heat exchanger after having closed the hole, uh, the hole in the drilling bit with, the, with grout. Uh, the, the, the second development is a, drill, is a drilling shaft which we retire uh, we, uh, and then insert the heat exchanger whilst um, uh, and grouting it whilst we are retiring the casing. 
this technology is particularly well for uh, consolidated environments where uh, with the rotate the very uh, powerful rotating vibration head of the, of the, of the, of this group uh, infrastructures we are reaching 2 to 3 meters uh, uh, speed and we are using much less hair or we can even drill with water which is what we intend to do in malta in soft limestone rock so these are the developments which uh, which we will uh, demonstrate in the in the coming months you can see here uh, on the left side the drill bit the losing drill bit uh, with, the, with from tissen whilst on the version 2 you see the rotating drill bit and the internal shaft uh, which uh, from our from from our technology which we developed in cheap and which we developed further in geoforcific with a rotating uh, drill bit so that the the uh, the external shaft does not rotate and has even less friction and less power to insert into the soil uh, we have already done pilots in uh, in Molinella, where is the, the production site of Hydra, the production producer of the drilling machine, and in Padova in the CNR. Um, and we are going to do demos in the sites, as you can see. Um, then we are, I know, open quickly the, uh, the chapter of the, of the heat pumps. Uh, uh, because uh, our partner Hire from the Galetti Group and uh, Galetti Belgium are developing five different types of heat exchange of, of geothermal heat pumps. One, the first one is aimed at, at, uh, at uh, being installed in single flats in multi-flat buildings. It's like a cupboard with everything ready to be connected immediately to the to the to the heating or cooling circuit, to the fan coils or the or the or the or the radi the radiant panel heatings uh, or even uh, uh, the, the ventil convectors. Uh, and uh, we are testing that with two pumps to also see the effect of working with or without an inverter on the compressor of the heat pump. We can also attach solar panels. Uh, and uh, so this is a very nice solution in renovated building flats where we put a loop of, uh, of ground uh, heat exchangers and supply the, the, the geothermal heat pump uh, to the, to the, through the building to the, to, the, uh, to the heat pump in the different apartments. Uh, we are also, uh, we already developed a high temperature heat pump, a two stage one, of which one stage is with CO2, which is the user friendly refrigerant with a global warming factor of one. Um, and the buildings, um, uh, th this was developed for historic buildings where we cannot replace the radiators, where we would have to destroy them. And we tested that in Zagreb, and we are going to test that again, an optimized version in, uh, in Dublin, uh, we are, where we hope to reach uh, COPs of three, which is quite good performance for, uh, for this type of, uh, for this type of, uh, of heat pumps. We, in another project, uh, a dual seat heat, uh, source heat pump was developed, um, and we are using them in two applications. One is the high temperature one, uh, where, uh, again, in an historical building in Ferrara, we will demonstrate that we connect them to high temperature terminals and it is a, a dual source, which means that we have supply from energy from the air and from geothermal. And in the case of, of the cooling, these two uh, sources are, uh, are in, uh, used in series uh, to be able to, to create a sufficient high delta T to reach good performances with this type of technology. Because a CO2 driven heat pump needs a high delta T, uh, which we create in this way by putting air and geothermal sources in series in Ferrara. We also have uh, a low temperature application, a low and medium temperature application uh, with that dual source. Uh, but there, the, the uh, um, it's a, it's a, uh, sorry, no, the geothermal high temperature, it's a CO2 driven, the last one, my, my apologies. I continue on that one because it is, uh, it is, this, is, it is again the CO2 driven uh, pump in a single stage, which needs a high delta T. But here we combine high and low temperatures. This is an application where in, in buildings you may be able to keep high temperature uh, 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 terminals because uh, otherwise you need to destroy too much of the, of the piping and of the building. Uh, and or it's too costly and combine them with an extension or with a place where you can do low tower temperature terminals. They are put in series and create a higher delta T so that we can reach with a geothermal heat pump at a reasonable cost, uh, good, uh, good performances. 
Last but not least, we have also a higher hybrid low temperature pump, which was developed in a in a, another geothermal uh, project, which was called Geotech. And there we uh, we are now optimizing that solution. They can take air or geothermal energy in function of the external and the conditions and uh, take the most optimal situation. As a result, you could reduce the amount of uh, geothermal heat exchangers and reduce the cost again. I know I have been very quick uh, to do that, but uh, because it was a lot of material to test, but I hope I have given you the essential elements of the innovations of these uh, interesting uh, two projects. Thank you. Next speaker is uh, Professor Delgado, Antonio Delgado, uh, that presents uh, the map of ground eligibility for drilling methodology and borehole heat exchangers. Uh, he is uh, an associate professor in geophysics uh, at the University of Padova. He's a geologist, uh, he's author of more than 120 scientific papers published on national and international journals. Is a scientific coordinator of numerous uh, national and international research projects uh, and uh, is also a member of numerous national and international scientific commissions. Also, Antonio Gallardo, Professor Gallardo, uh, is, uh, was present and is present in both projects uh, and uh, is uh, also a co coordinator with me, the scientific part of these two projects. And the role uh, of Antonio is uh, uh, focused uh, mainly on the, all the geological aspect of the project. Uh, is leader also uh, of other, some tasks, some uh, other uh, uh, target, but uh, his role is mainly on the geological aspect. As, uh, he, 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 this is his specific, <coughs> uh, specific expertise. Antonio, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, we are part of the geological uh, expertise of the two projects and uh, our activity focused on uh, the mapping of uh, ground uh, parameters uh, that evaluate the, the, the best drilling methodology to install the heat exchangers on the ground. Sorry. Don't, uh, okay, don't change. Uh, our our uh, work uh, focuses in particular on uh, drillability that uh, is a sort of a prediction of the, of the most suitable uh, drilling methods, but not only. Uh, we are able to evaluate uh, the, the best heat exchanger types and uh, the best uh, drilling, uh, drilling methodology, methodologies. Uh, so, uh, at, the, at the end, uh, our idea uh, was to estimate the installation time and the relative cost of the installation of the uh, of geothermal field. Uh, two types of uh, uh, output we have provided. Uh, the first one is a, a, a pan-European pan, pan -European scale drillability uh, maps uh, based on uh, uh, existing geological information and shared 
uh, such as Inspire, uh, Inspire Data that uh, uh, is uh, provided from uh, uh, an old, uh, a closed uh, European project. Uh, so uh, uh, this type of map is useful for uh, different type of output, uh, but uh, is not useful for, uh, for plan, ge uh, geothermal uh, plants. Uh, to complete the, uh, the information uh, uh, that are uh, possible to uh, explain such uh, a map uh, uh, is focused on a uh, particular type of map at the municipal scale, uh, a detailed maps uh, that are based on uh, 3D uh, geological information, such as hydrogeological, uh, ground temperature, uh, and the type of ground uh, this is useful uh, not only for administrations, uh, but uh, uh, even for designers and drillers to uh, uh, design the, the plan and uh, evaluate the, the, the costs. Uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first output was uh, uh, the uh, Dillability European Scale Map uh, that is uh, uh, designed uh, at the scale uh, one to one uh, thousand and half uh, uh, projection uh, map. Uh, we are uh, use the uh, the uh, inspire uh, geological data and convert to, uh, for instance, uh, uh, um, thermal properties maps such as thermal conductivity or uh, ground uh, temperature. Uh, this uh, information. Uh, uh, permit to us to evaluate uh, uh, the drilling cost based on the time, uh, time drill drilling time and the type of uh, of uh, drilling machine used in different geological conditions. Uh, the uh, different type of of uh, drilling methods uh, permit to us to divide in different areas. The, all the uh, European uh, European area. Uh, this uh, information uh, permits to uh, considering uh, ground hardness to, to drill uh, the best drilling technologies uh, uh, in front of type of ground uh, uh, crossed uh, and the uh, use uh, of or, or, or not use the casing uh, during the drillings that uh, uh, means uh, uh, different time and costs. Uh, we have uh, evaluated the drilling time uh, in three types, uh, main types of categories, such as uh, uh, minus uh, seven minutes for meter of, uh, of penetration, uh, drilling penetration, uh, until uh, 10 uh, minutes for meter. Uh, the, uh, all the informations, uh, acquired information, uh, permit to uh, 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 to build the drillability, the final the drillability map uh, that consists on the costs uh, divides uh, in uh, three main types of uh, of, uh, of range, such as minus uh, thirty euros for meters uh, until major uh, thirty uh, euro for meter. Uh, it all depends on. All the geological characteristics, uh, characteristics and uh, drilling methods are used, uh, and uh, uh, and the hydrogeological condi conditions uh, across. Uh, our idea uh, was to uh, in this this uh, slide you can see the the, the flow map uh, of the of the work that uh, permits to uh, evaluate uh, all the main. Uh, uh, Characteristics of the of the plant, such as the the type of uh, uh, of drilling machine, drilling uh, methods, the uh, total borehole lengths, uh, and the, the euro for kilowatt for the uh, installation of the uh, of the uh, borehole heat exchanger. Uh, this value is uh, assigned to heat pump cost and piping. Uh, our information at the European scale. Uh, uh, permit uh, to uh, realize a sort of uh, app app uh, for a, a smartphone uh, that permits to uh, in in, a, in a, permit to evaluate in the field uh, the a, an idea of the costs uh, 
the, uh, of the geothermal plants. Uh, this is a very, a very uh, speed method uh, to uh, analyze uh, the, the situation in a, uh, in a sort of range of costs uh, of, uh, uh, in front of the type of, um, of ground uh, and the uh, uh, type of building uh, and the localization uh, of the, uh, of the uh, building. Uh, the reliability map at the municipal scale is another output that uh, consists on uh, uh, evaluate in detail all the geological local characters. Uh, this uh, permits to, uh, to build a, a such a map used for uh, the first uh, uh, evaluation of the plants, uh, costs and uh, characters, uh, characteristics. Uh, such as drilling time, drilling, drilling costs, uh, uh, hydrogeological uh, conditions, uh, not only for uh, in front of the uh, efficiency of the of the plant, but even for the uh, eventual risk or hazard uh, connected to the drilling uh, drilling uh, performance. Mm -hmm. uh, our idea is to uh, help the uh, the planner uh, to uh, evaluate the. Uh, the cost and the feasibility of the of the plants uh, in an easy way uh, uh, in a different uh, in different type of uh, of situations. Uh, our uh, actual work uh, consists on the uh, realize uh, for uh, example uh, test uh, maps at municipal scale uh, in the four pilot sites of the European Geophysical uh, Running Project such as Mechelen in Belgium, Ferrara in Italy, Dublin, Ireland, and La Valletta in Malta. Uh, we are working about that, uh, and uh, we are quite finished the work. Maybe in uh, two months, uh, we, uh, these uh, uh, maps will be available, uh, but uh, our idea is to uh, furnish a sort of method to evaluate the, the uh, geological uh, feasibility uh, and uh, uh, relative costs and the best uh, practice uh, to use in uh, different uh, conditions, uh, but, can, but that can help to plan and not only uh, general uh, data that uh, are not useful for plan uh, the costs and the feasibility of uh, uh, geothermal plants. Many thanks. Uh, I, I wait for uh, questions, but maybe uh, by the coordinator We'll, uh, we can we will we will answer to them thank you Thank you, Antonio. Next uh, um, speaker is uh, uh, the colleague Riccardo Pasquali, uh, is uh, the director of ISME uh, in Ireland, uh, the GeoServe, and uh, he is a geologist specialized in design and installation of geothermal collectors and uh, in uh, geophysic project uh, uh, and also in cheap. Uh, ground source heat exchange and pumps. Uh, he participated in both, and in, in both is uh, devoted uh, particularly to the environmental aspect, uh, life, cycle, uh, life cycle analysis, uh, always uh, linked to the um, environmental uh, aspect, uh, and also recommendation task. Uh, and uh, if you remember my presentation, all the uh, books uh, that uh, you observed uh, uh, that was created for the different uh, legislation, different uh, states, uh, uh, he was uh, the, the principal uh, actor of this, uh, of this work. So it was a big work, uh, but I think interested for the European application uh, and the people that are interesting to all the legislation uh, and, uh, that are uh, present in this moment. So 
Ricardo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Adriana. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as mentioned, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about the environmental aspects uh, relating to both the cheap GSHP and Geoforce Civic innovations and some of the work that was done during the course of these, uh, these two projects uh, to address some of these, um, uh, some of these items. Uh, I hope the slides are going to move. Yes, great. Uh, so the objective really of the work that uh, was undertaken was to uh, assess uh, basically the environmental, potential environmental impacts uh, of uh, installing uh, and operating the new technologies that you have heard about uh, in the earlier presentations. So we specifically focused in both projects in trying to develop um, risk assessments for uh, the specific implementation methodologies and, and derive from those some solutions to uh, increase and let's say streamline the integration of these technologies uh, into the built and retrofit markets. So there was a life cycle analysis completed for both projects uh, and as you've heard a moment ago um, a regulatory assessment in terms of trying to understand uh, the implications of how these new technologies would best fit in, in the local markets. Um, and the final part really of, of uh, what I would like to cover today are the strategies that are being uh, developed at the moment uh, in terms of integrating the ground source heat pump innovation technologies, particularly uh, in the historical built environment, which is the focus of the Geofor Civic project. So um, to summarize a little bit uh, the approach that was taken in terms of trying to um, assess the environmental impact, we applied a common methodology uh, to both projects. Uh, and you can see from the center of the slide, this is mostly based on uh, the key sort of topics and headings that are covered uh, in a normal environmental impact assessment uh, processes. Uh, and we focused those on the real case study sites uh, of both projects that you've heard about beforehand. So the six real cases in cheap GSHPs and the four real case study sites in Geofor Civic. So th this basically, um, this methodology focuses on looking at the baseline conditions in relation to all the topics. So looking at the individual sites and trying to understand how much um, uh, how much there, there could be an impact uh, for the installation and the operation of the technologies. And then based on those, we developed some mitigating measures uh, and those mitigating measures were then uh, used to improve or streamline, if you want, the technology integration strategies uh, and disseminate those benefits to market stakeholders. So it's really important here to highlight that uh, the EIA process considered both the construction phase impacts and the operational phase impacts. So whilst the EIA uh, for the Geofor Civic project is uh, still ongoing, um, I have provided here a slide of some very, very uh, brief summary uh, of the results of the cheap GSHP project. Uh, you can appreciate we did a, a, a relatively small um, EIA for all of the different sites, which is something that I cannot possibly cover all of the results uh, from all of them for this project. Uh, but this summary table really wants to convey the following message that overall, uh, you can see the environmental impact of both the construction phase and the operational phase uh, of the cheap GSHP uh, innovations and technologies was considered to be low. Um, the potentially the higher impacts that were uh, identified were the emissions uh, related to the construction phase, which obviously uh, with the use of drilling equipment and uh, construction material to uh, carry out the installations, these would obviously be above uh, the normal baseline of each site. But in reality, uh, the overall impact is low or insignificant because uh, of two main things. Uh, the drilling technologies mostly uh, are far more fuel efficient than other uh, more conventional methods 
uh, that would be used in, in all of the sites. And also the uh, short-lived nature of the work means that the impact uh, is only very, very temporary. Uh, the other key one was obviously the visual impact. Uh, so again, the presence of um, drilling rigs and construction equipment at the installation phase is uh, considered to be uh, higher, obviously, than the existing baseline. But again, the overall impact is low, as you've seen from uh, Mr. Puckler's presentation. Uh, the drilling rigs are very small, the masts are very small, and this was one of the main focuses of the project, which contributes to uh, reducing the, uh, the visual impact. So the final one is the operational phase impact, and um, you will hear some more about that in terms of uh, operating ground source heat exchangers and heat pumps in the next presentation. But for the cheap GSHP project, based on the monitoring uh, data uh, obtained during a heating and cooling season over the course of one entire year, uh, the impact was deemed to be low. So th the next section really is uh, to cover a little bit the work that was undertaken as part of the uh, life cycle analysis. Uh, you can see that this was covered um, uh, basically using the same methodology again for uh, for the two projects uh, and you can see that outlined in the diagram. In each case we considered the individual case study sites, uh, the heat exchanger innovations, the heat pumps and the drilling methods and then based on those uh, the life cycle analysis was implemented to basically give us two uh, broad results. Now th this work was actually carried out by uh, Technalia who is a partner in the project and you can see the approach here for a comparative approach for both projects looks at energy performance indicators, uh, but also at uh, environmental impact categories, which remain the same. The main difference in the results here will be that in cheap GSHPs, and I will talk about those results in a minute, the comparison uh, of, of the LCA results from the project was done against published LCAs for other renewable technologies. Um, whilst for the Geo4 Civic project, we're pushing this a little bit further and we're actually looking at uh, system environmental certification schemes for um, HVSE and heating and cooling systems such as the PEP Eco Passport and uh, the EPD in order to better compare um, the, the outputs and the results of, of the innovative technology. So here are some of the results uh, from the cheap GSHPs project. Uh, in the upper part of the screen, you can see in the diagram the relatively uh, simplified uh, life cycle approach and uh, some of the key items and results that were uh, carried out um, during the course of the process. So here uh, is one of the initial results, uh, for example, is the energy payback time that was considered uh, comparing the um, basket heat exchangers and the um, coaxial stainless steel uh, uh, systems that were developed in the project. And you can see in this part of the screen here, uh, you can see this is a comparison between the Greek case study site and the Belgian case study site. And one of the leading innovations, which of course is the uh, coaxial stainless steel heat exchangers with an insulated inner tube uh, resulted in uh, shorter um, energy payback times than other, let's say, traditional um, coaxial uh, HDPE systems. So another one of the results, if we look at the operational side, is the carbon footprint of the heat generation. Uh, so this was obtained after uh, the monitoring data was, um, was compiled for all of the real case study sites. And you can see here that um, the cheap GSHP geothermal system uh, innovations on the right-hand side of the diagram have uh, a lower uh, CO2 footprint per kilowatt thermal of energy produced than conventional ground source heat, heat pumps or other renewables. So um, this is this basically also demonstrates uh, for one of the case study sites uh, the results in terms of the environmental impact indicators, which you can see here, uh, the 10 indicators I mentioned earlier on the left-hand side of the screen across the five different uh, phases of uh, the life cycle that were analyzed. And you can see that by far the primary energy used to operate the heat pump in the operational phase 
uh, seems to have the highest impact, but this is uh, considerably uh, lower, as you've seen uh, from the previous slide, than, than other renewable technologies. So I will move now a little bit to what we're trying to do in the final parts of this uh, environmental section of, of the work. And this is mostly focused now on uh, the Geofor Civic project, which uh, builds on the work from cheap GSHPs, and that's specifically to uh, address the implementation barriers of ground source heat pump systems into historical buildings. So you can see there are some um, obvious, obvious technical challenges which relate to architectural integration, aesthetic aspects, space restrictions, and so on. Um, these are, are further listed in the individual bullets um, on the left-hand side of the slide. Um, there are only some of the barriers uh, highlighted in, in, in this uh, uh, in this particular slide, but you can see that there are obvious external challenges, as you've heard before, uh, often inaccessible and uh, difficult to get to sites um, in dense urban environments with limited spaces for deploying uh, ground heat exchangers. There are some internal challenges in terms of trying to install heat pumps uh, in, in technical plant rooms and develop technical plant rooms, sometimes in buildings that may not have had heating or cooling uh, uh, systems before, uh, but also in terms of trying to integrate the terminals, the heating and cooling terminals into those buildings. So, so these are some of the challenges that are being addressed. And, and what we're trying to do in the final part of the GO4 Civic project is to develop some recommendation strategies for integrating these innovations into the build and, built environments. Uh, and you'll see obviously the building integration uh, the urban geothermal solutions, and then the sort of regulatory and standards recommendations to uh, facilitate, let's say, uh, the, the market penetration of the technologies or, or what is being looked at. And you can see from the diagram, uh, we have sort of six uh, main pillars of, um, of recommendations that we're going to be uh, looking at. So these will be published at a later stage in the project, probably, uh, towards towards the end. So thank you for listening and for your attention. I hand the floor back now to the uh, coordinator. The next lecture is uh, presented by the colleague uh, Linda Soma. She is a researcher at the, new at the Institute for Applied Sustainability uh, to the Build Environmental of Subsea in Switzerland. And uh, she is a person that works on energy policies, policies in the field of renewable of energy and energy data collection and analysis. Uh, she, Supsi is a member of a uh, partner of the both project, uh, but in particular, Linda is uh, devoted uh, to a research uh, uh, inside uh, the Geofor Civic uh, that uh, is take care a very interesting uh, aspect uh, of uh, related uh, to the um, interface uh, interfe interference uh, of uh, between the, the different geothermal probes when we install the, the probes in a, in a in a ground. So also is uh, involved in regulatory and management aspect uh, related, but always related. Uh, in this uh, particular aspect, uh, the interest aspect. So Linda, the floor is yours. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, good morning to everybody. Um, here I present, uh, um, starting with the question, is interference between geothermal probe a key factor for the sustainability exploitation of the underground? That's the question. And um, I start with two pictures. 
This is the case study we have in the GeoForCivic project. And uh, we see the picture in two times, last year and four years ago. And uh, my question are two. One is uh, you can see photovoltaics or solar thermal installation. And the other is can you see geothermal installation? This is a, a simple concept, but uh, with a huge, huge implication. I work on photovoltaics, solar thermals, and also geothermal data. And this is uh, an important um, aspect and the message that I want to give to you. It's important to collect data, um, especially if we are, we are underground, because uh, for future, it's really important to know where the drilling, where and where the probes are. Interference is a problem um, relate is a problem that increases in this year, especially where the density of geothermal system are increased. Um, in countries like Switzerland, Germany, Netherlands, in Sweden, is um, there is a deba debated open now. And uh, what we mean in the project with interference, we speak about. Uh, thermal interference uh, and not uh, we speak about we are not speaking about uh, the physical interference in the case when closed geothermal system um, are really close thermal interference uh, is created between uh, this uh, in this uh, system the direct consequence is a ground decrease temperature in the zone that are surrounding uh, these probes and so the heat transfer between the BHE and the surrounding soil is therefore penalized compared to other situations where there is not the thermal interference. This is the topic of our research. The main goal in GeoForCivic project is that we want to try to identify some recommendation and also to prevent possible thermal interference between nearby plants in order to guarantee maximum efficiency for all geothermal system, even over the long term. This is important the time. We are work now, but we are work for future. Step by step, what we have done, we have set the problem, the state of art, and we made a review of the interference problem in different contexts and countries, especially the countries that are connected to the GeoForce TV project. We analyze the data and we um, collect all input data sheet from real and also virtual case study. We create a conceptual flow for licensing system. And then we applicate this conceptual flow to all real and virtual case study. Finally, there was a simulation and some technical recommendation. The results from review analysis, analysis are here presented. We can see four main topics, the knowledge, the regulation, the planning, and the technical aspects. The color represents the topics. For example, the regulation, we find that the centralized and the simplified administrative, administrative process is really important. And also a clear regulation is important to allow to work better. For large system, for more complex system, um, an authorization is needed always. And uh, an important uh, um, topic uh, from my point of view, because I work uh, also with uh, um, this uh, geographic information system data is the planning because we have to know where the probes are and so we have to collect in a platform for example a webgis platform a geographic information system platform the other important aspect from the technical point of view are the presence of a simulation for a big plants the possibility to do monitoring after the plant is working, and also the regeneration of the soil to prevent the thermal interference. One example in Switzerland, we have a simple web geodatabase, and uh, everybody could go here, could see the, the data, and also have all this information, the ID number of the information, so you can exactly know which plan you're speaking about, the depth of drilling, the authorization date, and also if you can ask for the other document, document available for this, uh, for this uh, drilling. And finally, the more important for me, the localization, where we are, country, city, but also the cadastral number and especially the, the addresses. 
Which step come first? We create this conceptual flow for license system in six steps. The first is the license system. We need to have a clear system procedure that consider the type of system, if it's open or closed, for example, and the depth of role or the power extraction. We need a database which show restriction restriction where we can't do, uh, for example, a drilling or where we have a limit to do it. And also we collect their all information for the nation, for example, or for a region or a zone. The optimization and final design phase is necessary for design the spacing between plants. Then there is a certification and experience of involved company to check, to check and guarantee the realization is well done. The the other step is there is a, after realization is necessary to do an update of the database. So the information are needed to be always correct. And finally, the monitoring phase, which can show you if some, there is some problem of efficiency in the plan you have done. This is uh, the example we have in the Geoffrey Civic project uh, is uh, in uh, Switzerland. And uh, this building uh, um, is an old an example to see that uh, we apply for all uh, the case studies, the conceptual flow. Uh, to the right, uh, you can here see that we use a quantitative score we assign it and also a qualitative score with arrow. And then we try to say, Every step, each step, uh, if is well or is not well. So in our case, we have a license system, so it's good. There is a database, but it's a regional database, not a national one. There are standard, so we have the norm for the sizing and the good uh, realization and operation of the HE system. After the realization, the, the administration can check the plan, but usually don't do it because we have a certified, co certified company that do it. But this is a weak point. It's necessary to go, to go stronger in this point. After we have to update the database, and this is not always done, so this is the real problems. And finally, we usually don't uh, have uh, the monitoring of system, but in our specific case study, the owner of the, the building asked the planner to implement the monitoring phase because the plant is really uh, complicated. The results from all the case studies uh, from the geo cv project uh, is uh, this one, the graph show that the weakest points are the present of official database and the updating of it. So the message I want to say to you is uh, uh, try if you work in a administrative uh, with administrative policy or in a company to work on this on this points because are really important for future. And now it seems not so important, but will be really important. The last step are simulation of interference. We applicate uh, simulation for uh, interference in the, the same case study we saved before. And these are some results. I don't uh, go in detail, but uh, for all detail, you can, uh, um, if, if you want to evaluate interference, uh, I suggest you to go and download the file and to use ethical that easy thermal interference evaluation tool developed by University of Padua. It's easy to use without a computer complex code and it's recommended not only for, for public administration but also for technical companies. So use it, uh, it's important. Uh, three points, the recommendation from the simulation point of view are, it's important to limit a minimum distance between the uh, geothermal system. It's important to increase the total drilling length and to limit the annual heat extraction. The point two and point three are, should be implemented together and uh, uh, especially during the siting phase. For further details, uh, you can write to Marco Belliardi or you can see chapter three of our deliverable that is open on our website that I suggest you to, to see because there are a lot of information and uh, could be useful for a lot of you, I think. 
Thank you very much uh, for your attention and I wish you a good uh, continuation to the Congress. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Linda. And now we have an, uh, the, the last presentation that regards the tools that we are the, we developed and are developing during Geo for Civic. This is a collaboration between uh, um, the Technalia and uh, and University of Padova. Uh, Laura uh, present uh, comes from University of Padova. And the, Laura is a graduate in energy engineering in 2017, is a PhD candidate in thermomechanical energy engineering. And inside the geo for civic uh, she is responsible of the development of building archetype to, to that is uh, useful for the following uh, modelization. The economic and, and environmental um, impact uh, derived from uh, coupling of uh, ground source heat pumps and other renewable in historical buildings uh, and uh, cooperate uh, in the development uh, of uh, the architecture of uh, DSS, uh, that is uh, the argument of this presentation. And this DSS uh, is uh, useful to increase uh, the acceptance uh, of geothermal technology for stakeholders and policy makers. The awareness that we hope uh, the, this, uh, this uh, system can help us uh, to, to give more awareness of this uh, technology, important technology that can contribute uh, to save energy really very, very, in a very, very good way. Okay, Laura, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Thank you very much, Adriana, for your presentation. I will move on uh, with the description of the decision, decision super system DSS for geothermal installations. So basically, as you may have already seen from my colleagues, the objective of these projects were the, they aim to reduce the barriers uh, against geothermal technology, try to, to support the designers and to facilitate the pre-engineering for technicians in order to uh, increase the awareness and the sensitivity towards uh, geothermal systems. We developed two different DSS for the two projects. So for um, the CHIP project, the target audience were basically non-professional. So uh, for example, uh, homeowners, whereas the Geo for Civic DSS focused more, mostly uh, to professionals. And, but we decided to target the DSS to non-expert uh, in uh, geothermal energy so that we can spread more the knowledge and the, the background technology uh, regarding ground source systems. Uh, the, two the two projects focus on different buildings. Um, the chief project was mostly focused on standalone buildings, whereas Geofor City moved towards a, a wider perspective. So we analyzed the urban environment. Therefore, also the objective of the two tools were different. The first one was mostly uh, regarding the best geothermal system, so to optimize the technology and the, the ground source heat pumps. Whereas the second tool was most, mostly concerning the pre-engineering cost and the impact analysis of the tool. Uh, the first is, uh, I will show you the link because it's uh, already accessible online, whereas the second tool is ready for 
the presentation in 2021. Um, the website, the, the, the tool um, developing cheap was uh, aimed at non-expert users. So the set of database uh, had to be filled up for, um, from the user and it regards very simple uh, requests to present the building. And the tool actually wants to be an accelerator for technical offices and building owners. And the main aim, as I already told you, was to identify the most suitable uh, shuttle geothermal system. Uh, here, um, here is the link from where you can access the, the, the tool online. Um, and I will show you also a brief overview of the DSS. So first of all, um, you can input the information regarding the, um, your building. And because of course you need the, um, to evaluate the energy demand of the building before moving on to the design of the ground source systems. Then you can also modify the soil conditions uh, because they are based on the location of the project. And you also can link the um, climate conditions, which are mainly based on the weather files of Energy Plus. And finally, we consider nine different building typologies to move on with the energy demand calculation. And they are kind of archetypes that will provide um, uh, information when you, when you don't have it directly the information regarding your building. So it's a kind of data set, baseline data set, we can call it like that. And then um, the, the software will calculate the, uh, will size and design the ground source uh, field. And the calculations are based on the simplified ASHRAE method. And I provide you the reference of the, of the method uh, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, the four types, uh, four types of heat exchanger were evaluated uh, uh, during the, um, the whole project, and we decided to put, that, put them also on the DSS. So basically, we have single U, W, coaxial, and helicoidal um, uh, heat exchangers. And we also consider different auxiliary systems um, when the heating and cooling demand are not balanced, so that we can avoid probably temperature drifting in the, in the ground. And the, when, you have the, when you have defined and designed your, your building and the, the space available to the installation, and you also um, selected the soil properties and uh, the ground source heat exchanger that you prefer, you will obtain an output screen uh, like the one that you're seeing in the slide. Uh, basically, the order of the solutions that you, you will obtain is basically on the preference criteria that that the user had selected, selected at the beginning. The second tool is somehow different from the first one because the focus of the, of the Jeffers League project moved uh, to the urban perspective. Uh, therefore, the general idea was to do a rapid uh, pre-project assessment of the ground source sequence. And the, the main idea is to base the whole analysis also on the cost and the impact analysis, analysis to convince the building owners. The tool is um, addressed to non-expert uh, technicians and this will uh, actually help uh, in um, uh, sharing uh, the benefits of ground source seat pumps without be, uh, going too much in detail. And it will also require less computational effort during the development of the, of the final solutions and on the outputs. Uh, the general idea is that the DSS has to have also an educative uh, value for stakeholders and uh, energy renovation um, um, policy makers, because we want the ground source heat pumps to be more present in, in our systems and in our buildings due to their, of course, benefits related to the renewable energy sources. Uh, on the bottom of the page, you can uh, see a um, um, very um, short and uh, concise um, overflow of the, of the DSS. So after, the, in, after you insert the general inputs, that there will be a preselection of the technology you, wanna, you want to use in the DSS. Some additional inputs can be inserted regarding the soil and other particular, uh, for example, characteristics of the buildings. 
The software will move on with the geothermal calculation, uh, always based on the ASHRAE simplified ASHRAE methods and on the calculation of uh, key performance indicators so that you can have um, a direct visualization of the pre-engineering of the tool. And also, uh, you can also see the cost benefit analysis at the end so that the selection of the tool will be uh, more effective. The new, uh, the news and the, on the DSS of Geofer Civic is basically that the building types correspond to urban archetypes. Uh, therefore, uh, buildings that you, you can commonly see in, in districts in, the, in city centers. Uh, the durability of the soil is considered and new uh, heat pump solutions have been included uh, in order to optimize the, their operation uh, during the, the, seat, the heating and cooling season. There is the possibility also for the user to uh, do some intermediary calculations. For example, the energy demand now is calculated, whereas in the chip project where it was based on the archetypes, and at the end, uh, you can also um, um, see and have some detail um, on the technical solutions and results so that the technician can also give some qualitative recommendation to the user in order to support the decision for this installation. And at the end, there is also uh, the comparison be between the application of different levels of retrofit that, of course, depend on the possibility of, of, on the, of the investment cost for the user. And concluding this presentation, what, uh, what we, we, we want to highlight with the DSS uh, and, the Jeff and the two projects is that uh, they are really important both for professional and non-professional uh, users because they can help in... Um, explaining and raise the awareness and facilitate the access um, to shallow geothermal solution in our case, but in general to the to some uh, solutions related to renewable energy sources that we need to exploit and to actually to increase the use of renewable energy sources. And um, basically uh, applying the, the ground source seed pumps are one of the solutions to to uh, improve the retrofit of buildings and to reduce energy, the energy use uh, of the buildings themselves. So we hope that the application of these tools can help in spreading the knowledge and uh, of ground source funds. And I thank you for uh, that, for your attention and uh, for the listening. And I'm available for any question. Uh well, uh, this is the last. Uh, this was the last uh, presentation. Uh, I hope that uh, you were happy and uh, enjoy to to hear all this information, this innovation about uh, the the use of a geothermal uh, system uh, that uh, can help uh, really to reach uh, a green a green uh, target uh, of our uh, use of uh, to, to improve uh, the refurbishment, uh, to improve uh, the. Uh, the, the the way to use uh, the renewable uh, and uh, to be to be more green uh, and uh, more efficient. So uh, I thank you all the speaker. I thank you very much to all the the present, uh, and uh, I hope to see again in other occasions uh, and to. To, to to see more geothermal application around the Europe. This is my best wish that I can uh, I can say in this uh, contest. Okay, so thank you very very much, uh, and uh, I, I invite you to go to the to the to the website. There are video, there are information, there are uh, the public deliverable results. Uh, so I think that uh, you can find a really a lot, a lot of information about what uh, we very, very quickly <laughs> give you in this uh, in this presentation, uh, short, very short presentation. This is thank our uh, best wish. Okay, thank you very much to all. Thank you. Bye. 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 And thank you. Thank you.